Hi there, welcome to a video tutorial here on translating functions. A translation is a change that you make to a function. So if I make some sort of change, for instance, to this parabola's equation, you could see that ends up moving left or right. That's what we call a horizontal translation. And there's also a way that we can move it up or down. And that's what we call a vertical translation. So you've seen that at this point, hopefully with quadratics. I'm gonna show you how to translate functions such as the square root function. So I'm gonna start with vertical translations uh, and I'm, I'm gonna use the square root function. Uh, remember when this thing's graphed, it produces like a, like a hook shape. So I'm gonna show you what a vertical translation looks like for this function. So first of all, I've just developed a table of values. Remember, I kind of, you can arbitrarily pick these x values. I've picked x values that when you take the square root of them, you get nice whole numbers. So first of all, what happens if we add three onto the end of our function, right? So if I substitute the same x values in, but what I wanna do is see the effect on the y values as a result of adding three. So it makes sense that if I add three to each of these y values, I end up with this table of values. Adding three result in an increase in my y values in my table of values. Likewise, if I subtract two off the end of my function, you should see a decrease by two compared to our base graph, right? This is the table of values for the square root of x, and these would be vertical translations of that function. Okay, so that's the table of values. Now, if I were to graph these things, and you can do that using your tables of values, you'd see the following graphs. So this red graph, this is our base graph. There's no surprises there. We've graphed this function before, but you can see that my y values for my x, my root x plus three graph, all of those y values are shifted up by three. Right, so when I substitute in four to my base graph, I get two, but when I add three to that, I end up with five. Okay, so you can see that I've shifted my graph upwards by adding three to the end. Conversely, when I subtract a number off the end of the function, you can see I actually shift down by two units. That's a vertical translation for the square root function. Adding something on the end moves it up, subtracting something at the end moves it down. And it turns out that adding or subtracting a number at the end of a function produces similar results for any function, not just the square root function. And we've seen that when we looked at parabolas. Talking about the domain, we've already talked about the domain of the square root function in general. You can't substitute negative values into the square root function. There's no way that you can get negative values when we substitute into the base square root function. Makes sense that that would be our domain. The domain is all the real x values, but x has to be greater than zero. The range is all y values possible, but we can't get negative y values. So for the main and range for our, our square root function shifted up by three units, same thing, we can't substitute negative values in, so we should have the same domain. However, our range, we're now limited to y values that are greater than three. So it's not possible for this function to be less than three, which makes sense. We're adding three to the end of our function, so That should be the lowest value possible. Similarly for our vertical translation in the downward direction, our domain doesn't change, but now because we've shifted downwards by two, the lowest y value possible is negative two. We can't get below negative two, so we make sure that we account for that in our range. Just a quick summary of vertical translations. F is any function, not just the square root function, any, any possible function and this C value is positive. The graph is translated up by C units. So whatever number is here, that's how many units you're shifting up. If we have a negative value for C, our graph is translated down that many of units. Vertical translations we've seen do not affect the domain of the function. They're moving in the Y direction, not the X direction. We saw that vertical translations can affect the range of a function. They don't always affect the range, but they can, they have that power. All right, so I wanna talk quickly about horizontal translations. I'm gonna use the root function. I'm gonna show uh, the table of values for the base graph. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna show how to create a horizontal translation by making changes to the equation. So you can see I've added two, but I've added two inside the function. So you can picture if I just extend my square root, I'm adding two inside the function. I'm not adding it outside the function like in the previous example, right? If I stick the two at the end of the function, this would produce a vertical translation. But if I make a change inside the function like this, you're gonna see a horizontal translation. So in order to keep the same y values as my base graph, you can see that I've shifted my x values over by two. It's originally at zero, I've shifted over by two. Same thing from one, I've shifted over by two to negative one. So if we were to graph this thing, you, could, you, you can imagine that the x values would all be translated to the left. So if I add two inside my function, 
I'm actually shifting to the left by two. This is counterintuitive because when you think positive, you think to the right. When you think negative, you think to the left. Just remember inside the functions like bizarro land, it's the complete opposite of what your brain thinks. Unless you think that positive is to the left, in which case you're right. <laughs> so just watch out. Same thing if I subtract three, what I'm doing is I'm adding three to each of my x values. So I have to add three in order to produce the same table of values as my base graph. So let's take a look at the graphs of these functions. Again, the red graph here is my original square root base graph. When graphed, the root of x plus two, you can see it has been shifted to the left by two. Uh, when graphed, the root of x minus three is shifted to the right by three. So I've got my original domain and range. Let's quickly talk about the domain and range for my translated functions. So when I move my function to the left by two, you can see that the x values that are allowed to go into this function change. It's not that I can't sub in a negative number, it's that I can't sub in any negative numbers less than negative two. So that's a difference compared to our, our original function, right? Our domain, we originally had to sub in positive numbers. Now we can sub in negative numbers as long as they're greater than two. Okay, our range has not changed. The range is gonna be the same, right? There's never a way that I can substitute a number in and get a negative value after taking the square root. That hasn't changed. When we look at the domain and the range for the function that's been translated to the right, same situation occurs. There's sort of, you can picture this sort of vertical asymptote here. I don't have x values to the left of positive three, which makes sense. If I substitute positive three in here, I get zero. If I were to substitute something less than positive three, for instance, two, I'd end up with two minus three, that's a negative number, that is not in the domain of my function. So we account for that by writing that x has to be greater than three in our domain. Okay, so I just wanna quickly summarize horizontal translations. So for any function in general, not just the root function, if we add or subtract some value inside the function, so you can see I've got these brackets here that's telling me that I'm performing this operation inside the function, if our d value is greater than zero, we're translating to the right by d units. So if I have x minus some number, I'm moving to the right. If my d value is negative, I'd have negative negative. So you'd see a positive here. The graph is translated to the left by d units. So remember, horizontal translations, bizarro world. Whatever you see, it's, it's the opposite. If it's positive, you're moving to the left. If it's negative, you're moving to the right. So what we saw is that horizontal translations can affect the domain of a function. They do not always, but they can. We saw that happen. They do not affect the range of the function, no matter what. You're changing the x values, not the y values. So you shouldn't see a change in range of the function. All right, one more quick thing. I just wanna show you how we can combine these translations. So you can see that I've made a change inside the function and outside the function. Most common application of this that you've probably seen at this point would be vertex form of a parabola. So you just remember, probably seen this before. We're subtracting three inside our function, we're adding four outside of our function. If we were to start with our base graph, so our f at x equals x squared, that's just your base parabola. And let's say we apply these transformations one at a time. So we're gonna start by moving to the right by three units. Remember that's what this tells us to do, move to the right by three units, so one, two, three. We end up with this blue parabola. The next translation would be to move up by four units. That's, that's what this guy tells us here. We're gonna move one, two, three, four units. So you can see our vertex is located at three comma four. That's what tells us that we've moved our parabola from zero, zero to three, four. We've moved to the right by three and up by four units. So moving forward, you're gonna see some problems like this where you, where you start combining translations. In the next video, what we'll do is we'll look at reflections and we'll move on to stretches and compressions. And eventually we'll combine all of those together into sort of like a uber omega problem that involves all transformations possible.